Hi, it's Katrina. Leatherman. For over 30 years during the late 19th century, a vagabond known as the Leatherman repeatedly walked the same 365 mile circuit between the Connecticut and Hudson Rivers, completing the journey every 34 days. He stayed in rock shelters, locally nicknamed Leatherman Caves, and stopped at various towns along the way for food and supplies. But who was this mysterious man? The leather man was known for his handmade, head-to-toe leather suit, which weighed 60 pounds and was made from old boot tops that he sewed together. The transient was thought to be of French or French-Canadian origin, but to this day, nobody truly knows who he was or where he came from. An 1870 news article stated that the leather man barely spoke, only occasionally uttering monosyllables and communicating with gestures and grunts. He was fluent in French, but used broken English on the rare occasion that he felt like saying something. Even if the leather man could talk, it was clear that he preferred not to, especially regarding his past, which he refused to answer questions about. In addition to not knowing the man's identity or origin, nobody knew how he made money. Despite this, they grew to accept the vagrant. In certain Connecticut towns, they knew when to expect him and had food ready for him upon his arrival. He was even exempt from the state's anti-transient laws in several towns. The Leatherman was forcibly hospitalized in 1888, where he was found to be emotionally disturbed but sane and was released. He died in one of his cave homes the following year from cancer of the mouth, most likely caused by tobacco use, and was buried in Ossining, New York. His headstone identifies him as Jules Borglay, but this has since proven to be false. In 2011, archaeologists exhumed the Leatherman's grave in an attempt to learn more about him. Oddly, they were unable to find his remains, ruling out the possibility of taking a DNA sample and deepening the mystery of who he was and why he chose to live the way he did. This man remains a complete mystery. Slovenian War Hero Born to a working-class family in Yugoslavia in 1925, Albina Malihosevar became a resistance fighter at just 16 years old. She was one of eight siblings and went to work at a young age, helping to support her family after her father died in 1934. When Axis forces conquered Yugoslavia in 1941, Albina joined the National Liberation Army, an anti-Nazi resistance movement. There was a Slovenian branch within Yugoslavia known as the Slovene Partisans, which organized into guerrilla units and later as an army. Their enemies were whoever was occupying Slovenia as the invading powers of Germany, Italy and Hungary would then arrest and imprison the Slovenian people, forcing them to live and work in concentration camps. The young woman was wounded twice when she was 17. In 1943, right after turning 18 years old, she was wounded again by an exploding mine. Her injuries left her face permanently disfigured, but Albina nevertheless continued serving in the war effort for another two years, working as a nurse until the war ended. She went on to live a fulfilling life, passing away at age 75 in 2001. Today, Albina is considered a national hero of Slovenia, which was part of the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia before it broke up. In recent years, retouched images of the brave fighter without her facial injuries have circulated online, offering a glimpse of what Albina may have looked like before she was wounded. The Hindenburg In the 1930s, Zeppelins, or hydrogen-filled airships, were the future of air travel. The Hindenburg was a German commercial passenger-carrying airship and the largest aircraft of its type ever built, measuring 804 feet long. It carried passengers between Germany and the United States at a cruising speed of 84 miles per hour. The luxurious airship had a bar, a smoking lounge, and even cabins. However, during the second of its 10 scheduled transatlantic flights, the Hindenburg made its final approach to the Lakehurst Naval Air Station in New Jersey, with plans to make a high landing, which involved winching the vehicle down from a high altitude, something it had only done once before. At some point during this process, the airship burst into flames. 35 of the 97 people aboard, including 13 crewmen and 22 passengers, lost their lives in the explosion. The last known photo of the Hindenburg was taken as it made its way to the Garden State, which served as its final resting place. After the disaster, people were understandably afraid of traveling via airship, abruptly ending the vehicle's era. The incident was officially attributed to the ship having a hydrogen gas leak, which interacted with a discharge of atmospheric electricity, 
although some speculated that an anti-Nazi act of sabotage was carried out on the ship. George Mallory and Sandy Irvine Mountaineers George Mallory and Sandy Irvine vanished from the northeast ridge of Mount Everest during the 1924 British Mount Everest expedition. They were last seen about 800 feet from the summit before they disappeared from sight. This is the last known photo ever taken of Mallory and Irvine before their unsuccessful climb. For the next 75 years, nobody knew what happened to Mallory. In 1999, climbers discovered his body laying face down while filming a BBC documentary. His remains were remarkably well preserved due to the constant freezing temperatures on the mountain. Irvine's body has never been found, but experts believe that the pair fell to their deaths. There is a severed rope around Mallory's waist, indicating that he likely tumbled down the ridge, breaking one of his legs on the way down. His uninjured leg was found crossed over the broken limb, suggesting that he was alive for a brief period after the fall and attempted to protect his injured leg. Although Irvine's body remains missing, his pickaxe was found near Mallory's remains. It's unknown whether the two men were tied together when Mallory fell, how he managed to cut the rope before descending to his death, and why Irvine's body was not discovered nearby. The team who discovered Mallory was hoping that he was carrying a camera, but they never found it. So they think that Irvine must have been carrying it. If found, there's a chance that the camera's film could still be developed, with possible photographs that would shed light on the final part of their journey. Japan Airlines Flight 123 Japan Airlines Flight 123 began experiencing mechanical problems 12 minutes after takeoff on August 12, 1985, while en route from Haneda Airport in Tokyo to Osaka. During the routine flight, the Boeing 747 experienced sudden decompression, and part of the plane's tail and vertical stabilizer were destroyed. At some point, the aircraft veered hundreds of miles off course. 32 minutes after things started going wrong, it crashed near Mount Takamagahara, northwest of Tokyo. Someone snapped this photo of the plane's interior after things started going awry and shortly before the crash occurred. The image, taken by an unidentified passenger, captures the chaos that was going on inside the cabin after passengers' oxygen masks were deployed. Over 1,000 emergency workers and 70 paratroopers were dispatched to the site, which was incredibly difficult to reach on foot. All 15 crew members died, and all but four of 509 passengers died, making it the deadliest single aircraft accident in aviation history. Some initially survived the crash, but passed away from their injuries afterward. From her hospital bed, survivor Yumi Ochiai said that she could hear survivors screaming and moaning throughout the night, but that the noise gradually quieted as they succumbed to their injuries. Investigators concluded that Boeing mechanics had performed a faulty repair job in 1978 after the plane was involved in a tail strike accident. Joseph Avery One day in July 1854, a man named Joseph Avery and two other men were working on a dredging boat on the Niagara River, supposedly while drinking. Not surprisingly, they lost control of the boat amid the river's strong current and it smashed into a rock. An oar broke and the river swept Avery's two companions over the falls to their deaths, but he managed to cling to a log stuck between two rocks for 18 straight hours, holding out hope that someone would be able to save him as shocked tourists watched. Finally, a rescue vessel reached the man, but once he climbed aboard, the boat capsized almost immediately, launching Avery back into the river. The Niagara Frontier described the man's terrifying last moments. Throwing his hands up in surrender, Avery let out a final scream, fell backwards into the water, and was swept to his death over the American Falls. This daguerreotype, an old type of photograph that was widely used during the 1840s and 50s, shows Avery clinging to the log as the rapid current rushed past him. Taken by a photographer named Platt D. Babbitt, the image was featured in news articles covering his tragic death. Archduke Franz Ferdinand June 28, 1914 sparked the beginning of World War I. On that day, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, the heir to the unstable Austro-Hungarian Empire, and his wife, Countess Sophie Chotek, were on a trip in Sarajevo in an open vehicle. Someone snapped an image of the couple before things went south. On that fateful day, there was a series of assassination attempts, starting when a black package landed on the open hood of his car. The Archduke grabbed it and tossed it out, and the package exploded under another car, injuring several people that were part of the imperial entourage. The perpetrator was a 20-year-old native to Herzegovina and a member of the Serbian Orthodox faith. He fled the scene by jumping off the bridge into the river but was ultimately captured. 
After the close call, the Archduke reportedly tried convincing his wife to retreat to a safe place, but she refused to leave his side. Minutes before their deaths, someone captured an image of them leaving the town hall. Shortly thereafter, the car driver took a wrong turn and pulled to a stop, where the couple was shot dead by 19-year-old Gavrilo Princip, a Bosnian Serb intent on ending Austro-Hungarian rule in Bosnia and Herzegovina. Today, his legacy is hotly debated. Was he a terrorist or a national hero? Regardless, his actions and the deaths of the Archduke and Duchess became a powerful historical symbol. Their bodies were sent back to Austria. Meanwhile, Princip attempted to commit suicide but failed when his pistol was wrestled out of his grasp. The young man expressed remorse at his trial, yet was proud of the act, saying that it was necessary for Yugoslavs to be free from Austria. He died of tuberculosis in prison. Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia, then Europe slipped into world war. Johnny Gosh Johnny Gosh, a 12-year-old paperboy from West Des Moines, Iowa, disappeared on the morning of September 5, 1982, while delivering newspapers just two blocks away from his home. According to eyewitnesses, someone forced the boy into a blue car and quickly sped off, leading authorities to believe he was abducted. The Des Moines Register reported that the only evidence they found at the scene was Johnny's red wagon filled with newspapers. This image is the last picture taken of Johnny before he disappeared. He remains missing to this day, nearly 40 years later. Police have never established a motive for what they believe was a kidnapping, and they dispute several of his mother, Noreen Gosh's claims, including her assertion that a nationwide pedophile ring abducted her son and possibly forced him into sex slavery. USA Today reported that Noreen worked three jobs to pay private investigators to look into Johnny's case, and she also claims that Johnny personally visited her at her home in the middle of the night in March 1997. Johnny, who would have been 27 at the time, was accompanied by an unidentified man. He allegedly told Noreen that he was victimized by a pedophile organization, but was tossed out when he became too old to cater to the sick fantasies of its clientele. The man thought to be Johnny spoke with Noreen for over an hour, but reportedly looked to the man he was traveling with for approval before speaking. He refused to disclose where he was living, and Noreen concluded that he had assumed a new identity out of fear for his safety. Authorities weren't sold on the story, and instead stuck to their theory that Johnny is dead, citing that there was no evidence to suggest that Johnny was swept into a pedophile ring. The Challenger Crew in early 1986, all seven crew members of the Space Shuttle Challenger died when the spacecraft exploded just 73 seconds after takeoff, tragically disintegrating over the Atlantic Ocean. The last known photo of the Challenger crew was taken as they walked down the ramp unknowingly to their deaths. Known for being the second shuttle to reach space in 1983, the Challenger was destroyed on its 10th launch. Prior to the disaster, some engineers expressed concern over the shuttle's ability to function properly in the below freezing conditions that day. The launch went ahead as scheduled as the media gathered to capture footage and images of the shuttle, which was carrying Krista McAuliffe, the first schoolteacher to enter space. Sadly, their cameras captured the breakup of the Challenger as it ascended toward space. It took two weeks for salvage crews to retrieve the wreckage and the seven astronauts' remains. Those that were identifiable were handed over to their families. The others were buried in Arlington National Cemetery at a monument to the crew. All signs point toward the accident resulting from an O-ring malfunction caused by the unusually frigid temperatures on the day of the launch. But a U.S. House of Representatives report from the Committee on Science and Technology argued that a long-standing failure in safety protocols played a crucial role in the disaster. In response to the findings, NASA worked diligently to improve its spacecraft as well as its workforce's culture of accountability. Python While listening to music one night in July 2018, Stuart Saunders, a blind man who lives in Exeter, UK, heard a crash in his bathroom. He went in there to investigate and kept hearing things falling in there. He repeatedly tried picking up what he thought was a foam pipe, assuming that the wind from the nearby window had knocked everything over. But it wasn't tubing or a pipe at all. It was a gigantic snake. Stewart, who was born blind, told The Sun, I went forward and picked it up, but it was too heavy. I rang my support worker on the intercom and said, I've got a bit of a mess, and over they came. The home care aide entered the room to find that the object Stewart was trying to grasp was no harmless home construction material, but an eight-foot-long python. It's believed the massive reptile had made its way into the 60-year-old man's home by slithering up his toilet. They called the police and an exotic animal company came over to capture the super-sized serpent. 
When all was said and done, Stewart seemed more annoyed than terrified, stating it left the bathroom in an awful mess with gunj on the wall. The whole bathroom has to be deep cleaned. It is still a bit of a mystery as to how the snake appeared in his bathroom. Speaking of which, in Thailand, a man was using the bathroom at his restaurant when a giant snake smashed through the ceiling, hanging down and swinging, probably in search of food, like some creepy chandelier. It was also a python, and while usually these snakes are harmless, if they catch you sleeping or off guard, they could squeeze you to death. While this wasn't in his home per se, it looks like you just never know when an 8-foot python will pop up. Massive Black Bear when Vance Hopkins of South Lake Tahoe, California discovered a massive black bear beneath his porch, he did the exact opposite of what most people would do. He went outside to investigate, with camera in hand. He approached the bear, coming within feet of the gargantuan creature, who looked both stunned and nervous. Not surprisingly, the bear lunged forward, not once, but twice. At that point, Hopkins evidently came to his senses and climbed the stairs leading up to the deck. He then pounded on the wood above the bear's head to scare it away. Naturally, the bear fled from beneath the porch, but before running away, he stopped and went to the bathroom in Hopkins' yard, perhaps as a way to get the last word in. Initially, there was some confusion regarding whether the offending creature was a brown or a black bear. It was a very large black bear, which is fortunate for Hopkins as they are far less likely to attack a human than brown bears. Generally speaking, black bears mock charge at people in hopes of scaring them away before resorting to actual physical aggression. Don't recommend getting up close and personal with bears under your house, but hey. Mountain Lions One day in 2018, Ashland, Oregon resident Lauren Taylor came home to find a mountain lion peacefully napping behind her living room sofa. She left the animal alone and the door open, hoping it would wake up and leave. Her house must be really comfortable and relaxing. The cat continued sleeping for another six hours, but eventually woke up and left as Lauren had hoped. She explained in a viral Facebook post that she believes a mountain lion entered through an open door after drinking from a pond in her yard. Then, the woman's roommate had discovered the animal and screamed, scaring the cat into the house and prompting it to hide behind the couch and take a snooze. Lauren took a different approach, remaining as calm as possible until the mountain lion left the home. In regions where mountain lions are known to live, scenarios like this are not too unusual. In 2019, a family found one of the big cats lounging in their Northern California home in the Sierra Nevada foothills. The animal entered while the family was home, busting through their screen door and making its way into the bathroom where it decided to take a nap. The family sought shelter in the basement and summoned authorities who broke through the bathroom window and coaxed the mountain lion out of the home. Have you ever found a wild animal in your home? Let me know in the comments below and while you're at it, be sure to subscribe if you are new here. I've found a scorpion and a mouse before and my mom found a six foot bull snake and just took it outside. Spiders by the thousands. In late 2014, a massive venomous spider infestation forced a suburban St. Louis, Missouri family from their upscale home. The creepy crawlers laid siege to the house, pouring in from the ceiling and covering the walls like some sort of horrifying arachnophobia movie. Homeowners Susan and Brian Tross had purchased the $450,000 home on a fancy golf course seven years earlier. Not long after that, brown recluse spiders began appearing in disturbing numbers. Brown recluse spiders are very venomous, and if they bite you, the site will turn red and blister, followed by potential tissue death. If not treated, the necrotic tissue will spread, causing infection and other serious complications. Pets and children are especially vulnerable. And the worst thing is, you might not even feel if one bites you, especially if you are sleeping. Homeowner Susan Tross said that by 2012, they started bleeding out of the walls. By then, the couple had filed an insurance claim and filed a lawsuit against the previous homeowners for not telling them about the problem. Jamal Sandage, one of the nation's top brown recluse experts, estimated the number of spiders in the home at somewhere between 4,500 and 6,000 during the winter, when the creatures are least active. So imagine in the summer. The trust won their lawsuit but failed to receive compensation from both the previous homeowners and their insurance company. They ultimately had no other choice than to cut their losses and move out to escape the venomous spiders. It wasn't until two years later that the Federal National Mortgage Association finally covered the home with nine tarps and filled it with gas to permeate the walls and kill anything crawling around once and for all. Whoever buys that house next hopefully gets a good deal because it seems like it has some bad energy. Gigantic Alligator A Clearwater, Florida family received the shock of a lifetime when a household member woke up for a midnight snack and discovered an 11-foot-long alligator in their kitchen. 
CBS reported that the creature had busted in through a low kitchen window and knocked over the dining table and chairs. Yikes, just busted in and made itself at home. The panicked homeowner called police, who sent a professional trapper to the scene. Thankfully, the gigantic gator was captured without incident or injury, according to police, who posted images of the reptile sticking its head through the broken window it entered the home through, as well as the mess the creature made in the kitchen. Exactly what inside the home tempted the alligator to the point where it was willing to smash through glass is unclear, but this was far from the first time Floridians have found gators in terrifyingly close proximity. I mean, it is Florida after all. A month earlier, an alligator went for a swim in a Sarasota family swimming pool in the middle of the night. In 2017, an 800 pound alligator appeared on a Lakeland, Florida golf course, shocking residents with his enormous size. Pictures and videos of the massive 12-foot-long creature went viral, earning him the nickname Mr. Humpback. Jack Hanna, an alligator expert and director emeritus of the Columbus Zoo and Aquarium, told CBS that people should remain at least 40 to 50 feet away from alligators when possible. But as these examples show, doing so is not always possible. If one breaks into your home, get out of there as quickly as you can, and take your cell phone with you so you can call for help. Rabbit Bats Rabies is almost always deadly. There are only a handful of verified cases of humans surviving this terrifying disease. When someone is bitten by a rabid animal, they have a very limited amount of time to receive treatment to prevent a rabies infection. And once that happens, it's most likely too late to save their life. This deadly virus causes tortuous symptoms, including excessive drooling, hallucinations, insomnia, hyperactivity, and an inability to swallow, which progressively worsen until the patient dies. Experts highly recommend avoiding animals that are most likely to spread rabies, including bats, foxes, raccoons, skunks, and coyotes, according to the Mayo Clinic. But sometimes they are hard to avoid, especially if they get into your house. This was the case last October when a bat made its way into a Lewiston, Maine residence. The homeowner quickly called Animal Control, who seized it and tested it for rabies. The results were positive. Police did not elaborate on whether the bat bit the resident, but they warned the public to be vigilant about bats and to consult with a medical professional if they think they have come into close contact with one. Pregnant Rattlesnake Social media users panicked en masse last August when Rattlesnake Solutions, a Phoenix-based pest control service, posted a picture of a gigantic snake it removed from beneath the bed of a panicked couple. Most calls that the company receives of people screaming, rattlesnake in the house, turn out to be night snakes. But this was an exception. The reptile beneath the homeowner's bed was indeed a western diamondback rattlesnake. While night snakes are harmless to humans, western diamondbacks are highly venomous and dangerous. Mitchell Hawkins, who responded to the call, was not only surprised by the snake's species, but to realize that she was also pregnant. He told the San Luis Obispo Tribune that the creature was in a defensive mood and that she was unusually large for snakes found in Arizona, measuring around five feet long. Thankfully, Hawkins had an easy time removing the snake from the home while the homeowners waited cautiously on their patio. Using snake tongs, he gently retrieved the reptile, placed her into a bucket, and released her back into the wild. Snakes are not aggressive, Hawkins explained, adding they are defensive when they feel threatened, and rightfully so. He added that most rattlesnakes end up in people's homes through an open door. So, ergo, lock your door, which you should do anyway. There's scarier things than snakes out there. Brown Bear Many people would probably agree that if a dangerous wild animal broke into their home, it would probably be best if they weren't there when it happened. One family lucked out last summer when their home surveillance camera captured footage of a brown bear breaking into their house. While it's unknown where the incident occurred, the video appeared on Ohio-based radio personality Jason Priesta's Twitter page amid a string of bear break-ins throughout North America. Priestess commented on how the bear used its paw to effortlessly break open the family's front door, stating this bear has done this before. Once inside, the giant mammal surveyed his surroundings. Thankfully, he was gone by the time the family returned home. Not everyone has been so lucky. Just a week or so earlier, Aspen, Colorado resident Dave Chernowski sustained serious facial injuries when he woke up to a grizzly bear in his kitchen. When the 54-year-old was released from the hospital a day later after receiving surgery, he told local news station KDVR that it appeared as if the bear knew exactly how to get in the front door. 
Referring to the animal as his worst nightmare, Chernovsky described the moment the bear swiped him across the face, inflicting severe wounds. I ran back to a table at that point and luckily that was able to separate us. I just started screaming as loud as I could. I was very deep, loud, and he decided to go. He opened another door and was on his way out. He continued stating, I literally thought I might be dead. It was a pretty humbling moment because I realized how vulnerable I was. There was nothing I could do. Fortunately, Chernovsky was expected to make a full recovery. Due to the severity of the attack, Colorado Parks and Wildlife located and euthanized the bear. Ming the Tiger You may be surprised to learn that sometimes people don't find scary animals in their home by chance. Sometimes people just invite them in. Such was the case in 2000 when Antoine Yates, a 31-year-old construction worker, brought an eight-week-old tiger cub into his Harlem apartment after purchasing the animal in racing Minnesota. Why? Just why? The Siberian Bengal mix named Ming grew quickly, reaching 425 pounds by the time he was three years old. He apparently became too big for his owner to manage when in 2003, Yates went to an emergency room with animal bites on his arm and leg. The man told doctors that his pit bull had bitten him, but his injuries told another story to medical personnel who thought the bites looked like they had been inflicted by a much larger creature. Acting on a tip shortly thereafter, NYPD officers visited Yates' apartment to investigate. They heard growling from behind the front door and were afraid to enter. Instead, they drilled a hole in a neighbor's wall and inserted a camera into the residence, at which point they discovered Ming. Meanwhile, an officer approached the apartment from outside and shot Ming with a tranquilizer dart while the tiger charged at him, breaking a window in the process. Inside, police found other exotic animals, including an alligator, in an apartment. Neighbors had complained to authorities numerous times over the years about urine odors coming from Yates' home and of the man keeping large exotic animals there, yet the problem went unaddressed until then. How the heck did he keep this a secret for so long? Ming was relocated to a sanctuary in Ohio where he passed away in 2019. Meanwhile, Yates, who told the New York Times that he had a passion for animals and had purchased Ming as part of his vision of someday opening a sanctuary, pleaded guilty to reckless endangerment. He did three months at Rikers and was on probation for five years thereafter and was banned from owning animals during that time. Deer Let's face it, deer are cute and they seem innocent and harmless, but at the end of the day they are still wild animals and they can grow to be pretty darn big. And while it's extremely rare for a deer to attack a human, simply being in one's path can prove to be dangerous. A video posted in 2016 speaks for itself. The footage shows the moment a deer charged through an open sliding glass door and into someone's home, knocking down a painting that nearly crashed into a little boy who was watching cartoons. Wildlife officials often warn the public not to feed deer because this tends to develop a sense of expectation and make them less fearful of humans, causing the animals to come dangerously close to us and making them more likely to attack. Not only do many people ignore this advice, some even mistakenly believe that it's a good idea to try domesticating wild deer. In 2015, a West Virginia man was fined $300 for keeping two deer as pets in his home, claiming he found one of them bleeding to death in his yard and nursed it back to health. Last year, a Colorado woman paid a $100 fine for luring a full-grown buck and doe into her house with snacks, an act officials refer to as selfish and dangerous, not to mention illegal. Goliath Bird Eater Scientists often trek to remote parts of the world with the hopes of finding a species to study. And when they discover something new, it's exciting not just for them, but the whole world. When a man named Piotr Nazrecki went for a walk in a Guiana rainforest one night, he heard something following behind him. Expecting to find a possum or a rat, when he turned on his flashlight, Piotr was shocked to come face to face with the biggest spider he'd ever seen. It was the size of a puppy. As it turns out, Piotr had stumbled upon the South American Goliath bird eater spider. According to the Guinness Book of World Records, it's the largest and heaviest spider in the world, weighing up to six ounces, with a body the size of a large fist and a leg span that can reach up to one foot. Just like their name suggests, they can eat birds and just about anything smaller than they are, including lizards, mice, and frogs. Their one and a half inch fangs are strong enough to pierce a mouse's skull. The Goliath bird eater has also been known to make a hissing sound by rubbing its hairs together, and they sometimes arch their front legs and hinge their fangs back as they get ready to strike. They also continue to molt into adulthood, so if they do get injured, they can regenerate damaged or lost limbs. The spider is brown and furry with hardened claws on the end of its legs, giving it a distinctive clicking sound when it walks. 
Their legs have another quality that helps protect it from predators. When they feel threatened, the spider rubs its legs against its abdomen and produces a cloud of tiny barbed hairs. Known as stridulation, these can get into the eyes and nose of its attacker, causing extreme pain and itching that can last for days. The Goliath bird eater's venomous bite will not kill you, however, it will hurt quite a bit. The pain has been described as somewhere between a wasp sting and hammering a nail into your hand. Reticulated Python Man-eating snakes are exceptionally rare, but there are some truly massive species slithering about. One of the longest and heaviest snakes on the planet is the reticulated python, regularly reaching lengths of 20 feet and weighing 440 pounds. These giant serpents are found in rainforests of Southeast Asia, including Indonesia, the Philippines, India, and Borneo. Reticulated pythons are known to climb up trees, firmly wrapping their bodies around the trunks and branches. They are ambush predators, waiting for prey to wander within strike range before seizing it in its coils and constricting victims to death. These snakes are carnivores, with a diet usually consisting of small mammals like rats, birds, monkeys, pigs, and not usually humans. But recently in 2018, in central Indonesia, one of these snakes killed and swallowed a woman whole. Tiba, a 54-year-old woman, went outside to check on her vegetable garden, but little did she know a reticulated python was also checking out her garden. When her family couldn't find her, they went searching for her, and 165 feet from her backyard, they found the bloated snake. All that was left were her shoes. They killed the snake and cut it open to find Tiba's body still intact with her clothes and all. The Giant Squirrel Did you know there's a species of squirrel that can be as big as three feet long from tip to tail? Known as the Malabar Giant Squirrel or Indian Giant Squirrel, these technicolor tree-dwelling rodents look like they've jumped straight from a Disney movie. These huge squirrels are pretty adorable with their rounded ears and unique coloring with hues of orange, purple, and maroon. They have an expanded inner paw that helps them grip and large, powerful claws for clinging to branches. Their large tail also acts as a counterweight for better balancing. These massive creatures have the ability to jump 20 feet between trees. They create food stores high in the forest canopy instead of underground like other squirrels. Although they are not the largest animal on the planet, other species of squirrel are barely half the size. Their vibrant coat, though definitely eye-catching for nature photographers, does have a downside. It makes it easier for predators such as leopards, crested serpent eagles, and lion-tailed macaques to find them but some believe their coloring helps them blend in with the contrasting forest canopy. These giant technicolor squirrels are actually real. Dugongs. Is it a seal, a manatee, an underwater cow? Not quite, but close. A relative of the manatee, the dugong is a marine animal that's found in 37 different countries. They are mostly found in the coastal waters of the Red Sea, East Africa, Japan, and the Philippines, and Australia, which has the largest populations of them. These creatures are massive. They can be up to 11 feet in length and weigh up to 200 pounds. Their flat tails and flippers are similar to whales, but the dugong is actually more closely related to the elephant, having evolved some 50 to 60 million years ago. Both males and females can grow tusks. You can estimate how old a dugong is by how many rings that they have on them, just like a tree. Dugongs are the only marine mammal that is 100% herbivorous, meaning they solely eat seagrass, up to 88 pounds of it a day. Unfortunately, they don't swim very fast, which makes them easy targets for killer whales, crocodiles, and sharks. They breathe using their lungs, needing to resurface every six minutes to get oxygen. When they do, they stand on their tails with their heads above water to breathe. They are usually found in pairs or larger groups, using barks, chirps, and trills to communicate with one another. Although dugongs are slow, they are graceful swimmers, and some believe that they may have been a source of inspiration for tales of mermaids and sirens. Their name comes from Tagalog, meaning Lady of the Sea, a fitting name for those elegant swimmers. The Shoebill The Shoebill Stork is a large and impressive swamp-dwelling bird that's found in the marshes of Uganda and Zambia in Africa. Shoebill storks can be as tall as 4.9 feet. That's almost as tall as me! They get their name from their long, shoe-shaped beak, which curves down in a way that forms a hook. This sharp curve can easily pierce through bodies of their prey and helps them digest their victims, which are mostly small animals and fish. The beak can be more than a quarter the size of their bodies, reaching as long as 9.5 inches and 7.0 inches wide. Their feet are also quite large, about 7 inches, and its wingspan can reach lengths of up to 8 feet from tip to tip. Their huge gray dinosaur-like appearance is quite terrifying. Living in the swampy areas of Africa can be extremely dangerous. Predators are everywhere, diseases lurk, and it can be hard to find food. This doesn't phase the shoebill stork. 
This species is aggressive. If another creature makes them unhappy, they will show it. They will pick a fight with any animal, including crocodiles. Shoebills are smart enough to wait for the right moment. They are very patient, standing still for hours until they spot something. Then they lunge and snatch their prey, chop off its head, and swallow the rest whole. Their diet consists of frogs, snails, water snakes, turtles, and even baby crocodiles. Sadly, these big birds are nearing extinction. There are less than 10,000 shoebill storks left in the world. Loss of habitat and poachers are their biggest threat. Some hunt the birds for their eggs and chicks, sometimes paying $10,000 just for one. Luckily, local fishermen in the Bangwe Ulu wetlands in northeast Zambia have banded together to protect these native birds. Patrolling in canoes, they track and catalog nest coordinates, their size, and if any eggs were laid. Most importantly, they keep a watchful eye on any signs of human disturbance to the floating nests and their resident birds. Giant Isopod The giant isopod looks like it just crawled off the pages of a weird science fiction book, and it's hard to believe they are actually from this planet. With 14 legs, they spend most of their life creeping around on the seabed. These crustaceans look bizarre, but their large size could be a response to the extreme pressure of the deep ocean where they live. Typically, these giant bug-like crustaceans are 7.5 to 14.2 inches, but one recorded by an ROV in 2010 was two and a half feet long. Closely related to shrimp and crabs, this particular species grows much larger than similar species that live in shallow waters. They are bottom dwellers who prefer living in mud or clay, with four sets of jaws and small hooked claws that help them remain stable on the ocean floor. Giant isopods are scavengers, feasting on the carcasses of animals that fall from above. These massive crustaceans have been around for a long time. There have been fossils found of these marine creatures dating as far back as 160 million years. Their hard shells contribute to their longevity, with no animals wanting to chomp down on them. So, could the fact that they have no real predators be the reason why these crustaceans are able to grow so big and survive for so long? Flying Fox I'm sure you've seen pictures of this giant circulating online. Known as the Malayan Flying Fox, the large fruit-eating mammal is actually a bat. With a wingspan that measures up to 6 feet, this bat does have a distinctive fox-like face. But don't worry, they won't suck your blood. They mostly eat fruit, flowers, nectar, pollen, and leaves. They are native to Southeast Asia, found in Vietnam, Myanmar, Indonesia, Borneo, and the Philippines. Unlike bats, they do not use echolocation, but they can use their keen vision to find prey. Their long, sharp, curved claws allow them to hang upside down in trees, where they spend their nights foraging. They are social animals that live in colonies that can have as little as 2,000 individuals or up to 20,000. They fly in large flocks, often surrounding trees where they intend to feed. They land in an upright position but fall into a head-down position when eating. They are loud eaters too, making a lot of noise, vocalizing with growling and spreading their wings when agitated. They also roost upside down with their wings wrapped around themselves, and on hot days their giant wings come in handy as they use them to fan themselves. Even though these bats look pretty horrifying, they are docile animals and play an important part in dispersing seeds and pollinating forest trees. Giant Stingray The giant freshwater stingray is huge, with lengths reaching up to 16 and a half feet long, both body and tail combined, and some are said to weigh more than half a ton at a whopping 1,300 pounds. The colossal freshwater stingray may be the largest and heaviest fish swimming in freshwater on the planet today. They have been known to pull boats up and down rivers and even underwater. Giant stingrays are wide and flat and range from brown to gray with a long tail that looks like a whip. Often burying themselves in the sand or silt on the bottom of rivers, they lay in wait hoping to catch a clam or crab with special sensors located around their mouth that helps them to detect an animal's electric field. Even though they don't really pose a threat to humans, their barbed tail can hurt you, even penetrate skin and bone that can introduce toxins into a victim's wound. Described by scientists in 1990, the giant freshwater stingray shows up in several river systems in northern Australia and Southeast Asia. Australian populations generally average much smaller smaller than those in Southeast Asia but appear to be stable, but those in Thailand have been under serious decline and are now listed as critically endangered. Giant Barrel Jellyfish The giant barrel jellyfish is the largest jellyfish in the UK. They can be as big as dustbin lids, which is why they're also called the dustbin lid jellyfish. The bell of this incredible jelly can stretch 35 inches across and it can weigh up to 77 pounds. They are so large that smaller fish and crabs are known to seek shelter in their protective tentacles. These jellyfish are a spectacular sight. 
Just ask the two divers who came across a five-foot-long jellyfish while swimming off the coast of Cornwall, England in 2019. These jellyfish have massive translucent mushroom-shaped bells, eight frilly arms, and hundreds of small barbed tentacles. They come in a variety of colors from whitish, pale, or yellow to shades of green, blue, pink, or brown. Found in warm coastal waters in the late spring, they are often seen washed up on beaches in May or June. They linger in the sunny, shallow waters to catch plankton, which is why they can get caught up in tide waves and carried to shore. Their sting is not normally harmful to humans, but they can still cause a burning sensation if you happen to step on a dead one while walking on the beach. The Anaconda The Associated Press reported in 2007 that in Brazil, a 16-foot-long anaconda wrapped itself around an 8-year-old boy. For half an hour, the boy's grandfather beat the snake with rocks and tried stabbing it repeatedly with a knife before he was finally able to get it to uncoil. Mateus Pereira was playing with friends by a creek on his grandfather's ranch near the jungle. The snake attacked him and his grandfather said, When I saw the snake wrapped around my grandson's neck, I thought I was going to kill him. It was agonizing. I pulled it from one side, but it would come back on the other. Mateo said that it somehow brought him to the ground, bit him, and then started crawling up his neck, suffocating him. The boy was okay, but had to get 21 stitches where the snake had bitten him in the ribs. While anacondas are not venomous, they can get huge and can easily overpower their prey through constriction, which overwhelms the circulatory system and stops blood from flowing to the brain. They are the heaviest snakes in the world, and Smithsonian National Zoo reports that some can get to as long as 36 feet, weighing over 1,000 pounds. The Epic of Gilgamesh The Epic of Gilgamesh is the oldest surviving epic tale on Earth, written 1,500 years before Homer wrote the Iliad. It tells the story of the Sumerian king Gilgamesh of Uruk and all of his adventures. Famous in Mesopotamia, the handsome king is not without his flaws, and so he has to face many challenges as he searches for immortality. Gilgamesh is the son of a priest king and the goddess Ninsun, which makes him semi-divine, and in his quest he defeats monsters and learns about friendship and death, and the relationship between humans and gods, and all kinds of other things. What some people believe, however, is that Gilgamesh is not searching for life on Earth, but for a means of transport to go back to his mother's planet. It's just all about interpretation. Ancient alien supporters believe that this epic tale explains how aliens created the first humans who then believed them to be gods. The Sumerian gods of Mesopotamia that Gilgamesh had to face were the Anunnaki, sky gods that came from the heavens and brought science, math, technology, and writing to humanity. Author Zechariah Sitchin wrote a book claiming ancient Sumerians said the Anunnaki came from a mythical planet called Nibiru. Along with two other authors, Eric von Daniken and Immanuel Velikovsky, they formed the club of pseudo-historians who believe that ancient texts are not merely mythological stories. While mainstream academics and historians reject this notion, these authors believe that ancient people were more advanced because they got direct extraterrestrial help. The Vatican Secret Archive Deep in the heart of the Vatican, hidden beneath the center of the Catholic religion, are 53 miles of shelving with 1,200 years' worth of secret documents. This is the Vatican Secret Archive, and it is quite legendary. As its name suggests, it is secretive, but the actual translation was probably supposed to be the private archives, meaning that they are the Pope's personal property. The official name was changed to the Vatican Apostolic Archive, but it's too late now. The name Secret Archive has stuck. For centuries, the archives have been the subject of speculation and conspiracy theories. While a lot of people don't believe that these sacred libraries exist, they are 100% real. The archives were entirely confidential until the 19th century, when Pope Leo XIII opened some of it up to Christian scholars. Only around 1,000 people are allowed in every year, and even the top scholars in Catholic history need to go through a very rigorous vetting process before they're even allowed to step foot inside the vault. These secrets are also held inside of what can only be described as a fortress, deep within the Vatican itself. And while the Catholic Church does claim that they are not hiding anything horrifying within their archives, that is definitely up for debate. Of course, the Vatican would have you believe that the only thing stored inside of their giant vault is paperwork—1,200 years of just paperwork. But the secretive nature, protection, and the trove of information make people wonder, what are they hiding down there? While we definitely don't know everything that's hidden within the Catholic Church's most impressive collection of documents, there are a few ancient papers that have been revealed through the years that really stand out. There is correspondence of royal families, top-secret memos, papal letters, and ancient versions of the Bible. 
The archives don't share any documents relating to a pope until 75 years after their death. An extremely secret document known as the Chignon Parchment was rediscovered in 2001 and then made public in 2007. This document details the trials of the Roman Catholic military, or the Knights Templar, proving that they were absolved of heresy in 1308 by Pope Clement V. There is a letter from Mary, Queen of Scots, forced to abdicate her throne and sentenced to death by her cousin Elizabeth I, begging the Pope for her life. There is the excommunication of Martin Luther who sparked Protestantism, and documentation that has not been shared regarding the position of the Pope during World War II. There is also the rumor that they have documentation proving that Jesus fathered a child, as spread by the Da Vinci Code. While the Vatican has actually shared some of its collection, there is much that will probably remain a mystery forever. Bulgaria's Murder Bureau The Committee for State Security was Bulgaria's communist-era security agency that was top secret. Known as Service 7, it was responsible for kidnapping and killing Bulgarian citizens around the world. It allegedly began operations in 1963 and by 1972 was engaged in illicit activity in at least nine countries throughout Europe and even in Africa. The information about this secret service came to light in 2006 after a modern law allowed public access to government documents. 24 Chasa, one of Bulgaria's top-selling dailies, investigated nearly 5,000 pages of recently declassified archives from the former Communist Intelligence Service. These documents revealed the existence of counter-espionage units, deadly covert operations, and missions with code names such as Traitor, X, Blind Man, and Betrayer. These were clearly secret code names for missions designed to take out men who the Bulgarian government believed to be traitors to the country. It was specifically designed to liquidate traitors of the motherland who caused damage, supported enemy activity, or otherwise did things that the Bulgarian government just didn't like. It's been reported that at the peak of this secret bureau's activities, there were at least 39 agents working to kill, kidnap, and otherwise silence dissenters. Space Aliens Breeding with Humans A recent poll has indicated that at least 6% of Americans believe that they have been abducted by aliens at one point or another. They say that extraterrestrials are using them to reproduce because they are having problems on their home planet. Also, aliens are creating hybrid beings so that they can one day take over the world. 6% is not very much at all, and there is never any evidence of these abductions. However, you might be surprised to learn that there are some reputable scientists in the world who are claiming that aliens are not only involved in breeding experiments between themselves and humans, but that they have been doing it for a very long time. An instructor at the University of Oxford in England named Young Hei Chi believes that aliens are actually creating human and extraterrestrial hybrids that will be able to survive through the end of the world. According to Chi, as well as a retired Temple University historian named David Jacobs, who runs the International Center for Abduction Research, say that the numbers of reported alien abductions have risen dramatically over the past decades. As reported by NBC News, Jacobs has interviewed more than a thousand people who claim to have been abducted, using hypnotic regression that apparently allows them to recall their unearthly encounters with aliens. One of the most popular explanations for this is that aliens are trying to create a new and better being that is going to be able to survive in a world where climate change creates boiling seas and flaming forests. But how can we tell if aliens or hybrids are really living among us? Chi says the reason we don't see the aliens is that they are largely unrecognizable. The JFK Files The JFK files have been kept secret by the government for decades. These files are directly linked to President John F. Kennedy and his assassination. The files have helped to fuel all kinds of crazy conspiracy theories that others besides the notorious Lee Harvey Oswald were involved in his dramatic assassination. As far as we know, there are more than 35,000 documents inside the JFK files, but this information has never been seen by the public. Several collections of them have been released over the years, but they seem to be carefully selected and seriously redacted, meaning they didn't really say anything. But here's where this history gets seriously forbidden. In 1992, the JFK Records Collection Act was passed. This new act claimed that all the JFK files needed to be released to the public within 25 years. This was set to happen under the presidency of Donald Trump, but it didn't. The public waited for the JFK files to be released, in compliance with the deadline set, and for archival evidence to be revealed. But anything interesting was again held back. 
Apparently, the files were able to be kept from the public eye because of an obscure rule that states no files need to be released if they pose an identifiable national security issue. After all these years of waiting, President Donald Trump pushed the unfiltered release of the JFK files back to October 26, 2021. Do you think they will ever be released? Let me know in the comments below. The Secret Queen of the Assyrian Empire The Secret Queen of the Assyrian Empire, Samu Ramat, was famously known as Semiramis. She was the queen regent of the Assyrian Empire between 811 and 806 BC. She held the throne for her son in the years before he reached maturity and was one of the only women to have ever been able to sit on the throne in the absence of a husband. But this is a piece of history lost to the ages. According to the scholar Gwendolyn Leake, Semiramis achieved quite a bit of fame and power not only in her own lifetime but beyond, even if she has been counted out of the history books. Semiramis allegedly had massive influence in the ancient Assyrian court, and being able to maintain the throne for her son, even after her husband died, was no easy feat back in the day. This was unheard of at the time, considering women were not allowed to have any position of authority within the Assyrian Empire. She made quite a name for herself. Legend has it that she managed to stabilize the empire after a brutal civil war. She might have conquered the Armenians, and she developed incredible infrastructure for the kingdom, and yet her name is barely seen, even when looking into the ancient rulers of the Assyrian Empire. Ancient Hebrew Drugs A new archaeological discovery is shedding some light on the ancient history of Hebrews. This new revelation, which was made at an ancient Israelite altar, is suggesting that the Hebrew people smoked marijuana during their religious rituals. The discovery was made by archaeologists who used gas chromatography to test the Iron Age shrine found at Tel Arad, deep in Israel's Negev Desert. This altar was located inside the very heart of the temple, and it appears that it had been used strictly for the burning of cannabis. There was another altar tested that had been used hundreds of years ago for burning frankincense. Together, these two altars and what was being burned on them would have set the ritualistic mood. One of the altars was used to burn an herb that would get people into their religious spirit, and the other altar was used to make the entire place smell mystical. According to Iran Eri, the curator of the Iron Age and Persian periods archaeology section at the Israel Museum, many cultures throughout the ancient world used hallucinogenic ingredients to reach a state of religious ecstasy, even in Israel. Uncovered Slave Quarters Historians have recently uncovered the slave quarters of a woman named Sally Hemings at the house of Thomas Jefferson in Monticello. Their controversial relationship has led to much debate since it was made public during his first term as president. Thomas Jefferson was the third president of the United States and is considered the primary author of the Declaration of Independence. Because of his role in shaping the United States, his relationship with Sally is something that many people would like to ignore. But archaeologists in 2017 excavated an area of Jefferson's Monticello mansion and discovered the living quarters of the enslaved woman, and most historians agree she was the mother of at least six of Thomas Jefferson's children. The discovery is shedding more light on how enslaved people were living back in the early 1800s. According to Gardner Halleck, the director of restoration for Jefferson's plantation, some of Sally's children may even have been born in the newly excavated room. This room was adjacent to Thomas Jefferson's own bedroom, but it went unnoticed for decades. For the first time, there is a physical space dedicated to Sally Hemings and her life, says Mia Magruder Daman, a spokeswoman for Monticello. She was a real person with relationships and emotions. For many years, many tried to cover up the fact that Jefferson had a relationship with Sally and hide the difficult past of the estate. Now there are tours dedicated to provide transparency focusing on the 600 enslaved people who once lived there. Imperial Japanese Army Unit 731 The Japanese Unit 731 was a research program that turned terribly, terribly evil. This program was one of the greatest secrets of Japan until the 90s really, when information started trickling out. This unit was put together to research diseases, chemicals, and weapons. Unit 731 began life as a public health agency and began with volunteers from the army, but then they moved on to use prisoners as test subjects by giving them frostbite or a disease and then testing possible cures. But as World War II progressed, Unit 731 began to weaponize diseases. They were searching for the ultimate virus to drop over cities and, of course, tested directly on prisoners. Thousands of Chinese, Mongolian, Korean, and Russian prisoners underwent all kinds of horrors in the name of war science. 
The New York Times interviewed former members of the unit who said that none of the prisoners ever survived. The Times revealed it is becoming evident that the Japanese officers in charge of the program hope to use their weapons against the United States. They proposed using balloon bombs to carry disease to America, and they had a plan in the summer of 1945 to use kamikaze pilots to dump plague-infected fleas on San Diego. Their justification for all of this? In war, you have to win. The Stanford Prison Experiment The Stanford Prison Experiment was a social psychology exercise unlike anything ever performed. A research group led by a psychology professor named Philip Zimbardo took 24 college-aged men and randomly assigned them to be either a prisoner or a guard by simply flipping a coin. Those who were deemed to be prisoners were then arrested just like an ordinary criminal. They were transported to Stanford University where a mock jail had been created in the basement and imprisoned just as if they had really committed crimes. This went on from between August 15th and August 21st, 1971. The experiment actually had to get called off because of serious psychological damage being done to the participants. The entire point of the experiment was to understand the difficulties between guards and prisoners in real prisons. The entire experiment had been funded by the United States Office of Naval Research. However, the Stanford Prison Experiment turned into a very disturbing look into the minds and the abilities of completely ordinary men. Within just a couple of days of the experiment starting, those who were chosen to be guards were seen committing acts of psychological torture on the prisoners they were supposed to be caring for. The guards began enforcing authoritarian rules and being generally abusive. In the end, Zimbardo interpreted the experiment results as showing that when ordinary men are put into positions of power, they become abusive, sadistic, and will embrace any kind of social norm, including authoritarian behavior. Basically, many psychologists say the experiment revealed the true evil of human nature. The truth behind Mary Magdalene Mary Magdalene is a center figure in Catholicism, and yet nobody can agree on who she was, what exact purpose she served in the life of Jesus Christ, or even why there is so much controversy surrounding her name. Gone for 2,000 years, she's been called a prostitute, she's been labeled a sinner, and some people believe she was in fact Jesus Christ's wife. Another popular belief is that Mary Magdalene has been used as a tool of manipulation by the church and that they want to keep this history forbidden and secret. One of the biggest controversies surrounding Mary Magdalene is that many people say it was her that was seated at Jesus' right side at the Last Supper, not Judas, meaning that she was the most cherished of all his disciples, even outranking Peter. And according to Professor Joan Taylor from King's College in London, this idea is extremely dangerous to the church. Many professional historians, archaeologists, and religious scholars believe that Mary Magdalene held a crucial role in the life of Christ and that the church has denied it for thousands of years, denouncing her as a prostitute to keep women away from positions of power within the organization of the church. If Mary Magdalene had been so important to Jesus, it would mean that the church should have female priests. Several ancient versions of the Bible are believed to mention her, including a lost book of Mary that is rumored to also be in the Vatican secret archives. Thanks for watching! What's your favorite story of forbidden history? Do you want to learn more? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe for more videos! See you soon! Bye!